In his book, Jewish Objections to Jesus, Volume 2, Michael Brown says, Christian theologians often explain that Jesus was eternally begotten of the Father, yet that's not the easiest concept to grasp. To tell you the truth, I'm not too sure I can even tell you precisely what each of these words means. But such a statement does not lessen the mystery of God and his Son. Rather, it heightens the mystery, the wonder, and the awe. One with God and yet God, called the Son and yet eternal, and now in the person of Jesus the Messiah, forever uniting God with man. It really is profound, wouldn't you agree? Well, actually, no, I wouldn't agree. And millions of Christians wouldn't agree because Jesus clearly says in John 17, verse 3, that the path, the way to eternal life is knowing who the one God is, the Father, and knowing his son Jesus as well. So this love uh, of mystery, wonder, and awe that the doctrine of the Trinity has trapped so many millions of people in is really baffling. So many would say bull. That is George Bull. And uh, by that, I mean the works of the right reverend George Bull, who sheds light on why this eternal generation, part of the doctrine of the Trinity, is really something they're divided about. He wrote that Gregory of Nazianzus explains how the three divine persons are equally beginningless. How are they, the Son and the Spirit, not beginningless with him, the Father, if eternal with him? They are from him, but not after him. What is beginningless is eternal, but what is eternal is not altogether beginningless. So long as it is referred to the Father as the beginning, they are not then beginningless with respect to the cause. So the Father is properly said of him that is beginningless, the Son of him that is begotten beginningless. So I hope your head hasn't exploded by this point, but you can clearly see the problems they have created for themselves with this Trinitarian view of the one God of Israel. So you have modern day evangelicals like Driscoll and Brashears in their book Doctrine, the whole attempt to define the eternal relations in the immanent or ontological trinity seems misguided. First, God has given us no revelation of the nature of their eternal relations. Begotten unavoidably implies a beginning of the one begotten. So many evangelicals like Driscoll and company point to something that is very important to understand about proponents of the doctrine of the Trinity. And that is, if you control the language, you control the masses. So if we look up the definition of the word begotten in Merriam-Webster's, it clearly says that it means brought into existence. But if you look at the Catholic Protestant tradition and how they seek to control the meaning of simple words, you get this. Begotten is a term meaning to give rise to or to create. However, in the matter of the Holy Trinity, it explains the existence of God the Son outside our understanding of creation. They have clearly created a disconnect here be between the simple meaning of words and the church, quote unquote, the Catholic Protestant tradition. So what is the truth? Well, if we read the only accounts of the virgin birth of Jesus, we find this in Matthew 1. The origin of Jesus happened this way. The angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which is begotten in her is from Holy Spirit. And again, in the other account, the angel said to Mary, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. For that reason, he who shall be begotten in you shall be holy and will be called the Son of God. So if words have any meaning here, note the connection between the Son and the process of begetting. In other words, we are witness to here a miraculous procreation through the power, through the means of God's creative Holy Spirit in the womb of the young Virgin Mary. Obviously nothing about a beginningless beginning or eternal anything in relation to the generation of the sun. Now, where did this event take place? 
Well, Matthew 2 says Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea in the time of King Herod. And Luke likewise says during the reign of Herod, king of Judea. And of course, history tells us that Herod was king of Judea sometime between 37 BC and 4 BC. So obviously this event took place in a specific time at a specific place.